Good afternoon. I'm Mark O'Hare. I'm the founder of Prequin, and I'm delighted to be here at Super Return China in Beijing, talking with Edmund Eng, the founder and one of the partners at Axiom Asia. Edmund, good afternoon. Thanks for having me here. <laughs> Edmund, tell us about Axiom Asia. You're an Asia-focused fund of funds. Tell us a bit more about the the, the, the firm. Uh, sure. We are we were founded in two, 2006. Uh, uh, we have three funds under our management currently. Uh, the first one was raised in 2006, 2007, 440 million. Uh, the second one was raised in 2009, uh, 950 million dollars. And also, we have a. Uh, we just closed our third fund early last year at 1.05 billion dollars. Wow, yeah. that's that's quite yeah. an achievement <laughs> at a time that's been quite tough for many fund of funds managers <laughs> and fund managers generally. <laughs> um, so, your, your your core focus is that for. Asian investors investing in Asia or for US and European investors providing them with a route yes. into so, Asia? Yes, uh, so we, we mainly raise capital from uh, US, European and also Middle Eastern uh, uh, investors and nice. we invest in the I guess it's with, with the Middle East, you know, we invest in the Far East, in the, so far east. the Asian yeah. Pacific yeah. region. Yeah. That's a very interesting and very astute strategy mm -hmm. because you know kind of as, as one talks to fund of funds managers mm -hmm. what the the perceived wisdom is is that the the most sustainable strategy is if you like to to give LPs access to strategies and geographies that they find it hard to access themselves mm -hmm. directly mm -hmm. and therefore that's I guess what you're doing for your mm -hmm. uh, in investor base yes. and, and the success proves it's working mm -hmm. so what sort of funds are you ideally looking for in Asia is it is it pan asian funds is it mm -hmm. single country funds is it regional funds mm -hmm. is it venture is it buyer what's the mm -hmm. what's the mix our preference is uh, to invest in small and medium sized funds that are country focused because right. uh -huh. uh, the regional funds tend to be the ones that are bigger and most uh, that bigger and most of the institutional lps in us and europe they they feel they could access those fund managers directly themselves. Right. So we're really helping them to uncover fund managers that they couldn't do on Indeed. their own. Yeah. And, and, and what sort of resources do you have at Axiom Asia to, to give you that reach into the market mm -hmm. and relations with, with fund managers? I guess first of all is the background of the, of the founding team and, uh, and uh, basically five of the, six, of the seven partners in our firm were from GIC. Uh, Government of Singapore Investment Corporation, right. so with, right. with a lot of experience doing direct investments in Asia, and uh, and also a lot of experience of looking at fund managers. Right. Absolutely, and, and the network kind of just grow from there. So, so even mm -hmm. though I mean. Mm -hmm. I say a relatively new firm. You've been going since two thousand and six. As a team, you've been working together for That's right. longer, That's right. longer yeah. than that. So, Very so, good. Yeah. <laughs> now. We've heard different stories today about where China is and where Asia is in terms of the macroeconomics, mm -hmm. but let's go straight to mm -hmm. private equity. Mm -hmm. where, where, you know, where, where are you seeing opportunities? Where are you concerned? What, what do you like and what do you like less at the moment in mm -hmm. Asia? At a very high level, just macro level, uh, it would seem that there should be a lot of opportunities in Asia right now. Right. Uh, first of all, because of the structural issues with the superannuation fund, uh, and after the financial crisis, they have been in Australia. Sorry, the superannuation fund in Australia. They have been somewhat pulling back from private equity investments. Right. Uh, so there are less capital being raised in Australia, uh, which I guess from a macro perspective would seem that you know Australia would be a good area to to make private equity investments. And, and are you finding that? Are you are you allocating more money we, we to Australia? We are allocating more capital to Australia now Interesting. Uh, than than before. But Australia yes. to. I mean, to be honest with you, it wasn't a very big component of our previous right. two funds. So, yes. so it's just, we are increasing exposure, but it's still uh, from not a small, a very big from part. a small. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, wh wh where's the biggest? Uh, biggest part? have uh, is China. It's China, mm -hmm. right? And um, so, uh, traditionally, we put actually more than half of the fund in China. Right. Uh, but now, going forward, we we actually think about because of the competition uh, in China and opportunities that we are seeing in other parts of Asia, we are actually reducing that exposure slightly. Slightly, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So it's going to remain a, a large part, but That's right. reducing mm -hmm. it slightly and increasing. And mm -hmm. is it sort of frontier Asian markets you're going to? Are we talking no, about the no. Vietnam? <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's, more, it's actually more the mature market. Um, I, I think uh, one thing, you know, China with all the growth, 
uh, one thing that has really disappointed uh, institutional investors in general is the is actually the the, the realizations, the exits. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. um, so, so and if you really look at it, uh, it's in the mature market where you get to do buyout transactions. You know, but um, you know, you tend to see earlier realizations from buyout type of opportunities. Right. Uh, so we're really increasing in more uh, the mature economies in Asia. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. In Asia, mm -hmm. I mean, buyouts are there, mm -hmm. but they're a relatively modest part of the total pie. There's a lot of growth, there's a lot mm -hmm. of venture. Does that mean mm -hmm. you're, are, are, are you consciously focusing more on the buyout end of things, so mid-market buyouts is sort of the sweet spot for Axiom mm -hmm. Asia? Yes, yes, that's, um, yeah, so for our, comp yeah, it's roughly a, bit, a third of our fund would be mid-market buyout funds. Uh -huh. Now Edmund, a lot of investors around the world, at least the investors mm -hmm. Prequent speaks to, are, if not already investing mm -hmm. in emerging markets, they are, you know, absolutely keen to, to mm -hmm. start investing and increase their mm -hmm. investments in emerging markets, and, and first and foremost, mm -hmm. Asia. Um, what, what advice would you give to um, LPs who are coming into Asia for the first time and looking for opportunities? I would say it's a, you know, a bit of a cliche, but a past investment track record is probably not a good indication, a good indicator of future performance. Because it's such a young industry. That's right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think also also a lot of the I guess there were a lot of dislocations in the past, and those dislocations might may already have disappeared. Right. right. Uh -huh. Very good, Edmund. Uh -huh. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.